Hello and welcome to the first part of a two-part series. In the second part I'm going to be reviewing the Soundberg which I've had for a few months now but in order to review that I wanted to buy some fancy picture discs. Okay so the first one is a 7 inch single Haircut 100 Fantastic Day. This is uh, my favourite playlist of recent years was a 2019 what I call Ab Favs which stands for it's a sort of a play on Ab Fab, which is a UK comedy series series that stands for Absolutely Fabulous. And I call it Ab Favs for Absolute Favourites. And the 2019 Absolute Favourites playlist had this on there. Um, anyway, I bought this because I love the I love this record. It'd be nice to own it on picture disc. And then I did a bit of research on it on the internet a couple of days later. And I found out that um, Haircut 100 are reuniting, reuniting and doing another tour because it's their 40th anniversary and they've got a load of merchandise out. This um, this record came from their only finished album. There was a second one planned. I'm not sure whether it was actually released. Anyway, I had a look and they do a load of, um, they do this set in um, uh, CDs and on vinyl as a collector's edition. So I ordered that as well, but it, was, uh, it wasn't available. But I did order it, and eventually it came through, and it's four CDs. So it's a pretty amazing set. It's uh, called Pelican West, that's the name of their first album. And this one's called Pelican West 40, which is the 40th anniversary of that album. And they've got, um, there's four CDs in there, you can get it on vinyl. But I'm, I'm a fan of digital, unfortunately. Um, so there's the original 1982 debut album. B-Size Remixes and Rarities, and then Junction Box, which is the unfinished tracks, and finally Haircut 100 Live, a concert from 1982. So basically they released the first album, and the lead singer, Nick Haywood, uh, was a bit overcome by the immense fame that they had, and withdrew from the business, basically, leaving the band with a half-finished second album, and they, um, as, the, as I understand the story, they were... In, um, they were trying to get a new lead singer and uh, they couldn't get one and they convinced the drummer to step forwards and be the lead singer and he, he admits himself it didn't work out too well so they never made the second album or if they did it wasn't as well um, reviewed as the first album but anyway this, um, this box set's really good because it's got interviews with the band and a bit of history of it and the four CDs and uh, it's really sort of the first thing I did was put it on mini disc, funny enough, so I could listen to it while I was reading this. Um, so anyway, that's that one out of the way. Okay, so next up is uh, Phil Collins, "You Can't Hurry Love." Again, a classic from the eighties. Um, Andrew Hinge actually suggested a long time ago in the comments that I should do reviews of some of my favourite tracks. Um, like reaction videos almost, um, but obviously I can't play the copyrighted material, so it's a bit difficult. But this particular song um, reminds me of when I was a teenager, and we used to have our mates around. We had a we had a dartboard on a piece of hardboard, so if we missed the dartboard, it wouldn't go into the wall. And we used to place the hardboard up on the bed, and then play darts. And um, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was a, a record player that my brother owned, and we used to play. Uh, things like Eddie Grant and uh, and this particular track. So that reminds me of those days. Next up, we've got David Bowie. Now, I'm pretty sure his name is Bowie. Because I saw an interview once when Michael Parkinson, I think, said, is it Bowie or Bowie? He said, uh, to be honest, I can't properly remember, but I think it's Bowie. So from the man's own words, we know it's Bowie. Uh, but I like this track as well. Again, this is one of the ones that I'll play when I'm in the car, you know, Bluetooth from my streaming music service. Uh, wasn't really a massive fan of his of his work early on, but I've got a new appreciation of it uh, nowadays. In fact, we went on a uh, rare foreign holiday uh, last year, and this was the magazine, uh, Mojo Collector Series Special Edition on Bowie. And it goes through all of his... Um, various incarnations, 
all of his albums, talks about each one, some of the uh, interviews he did as well. Um, I've got to get around to relaxing and reading the rest of that at some point. Okay, so finally, this uh, 12 inch, well, it's actually an album, um, and it, this one's still sealed, it's not been opened, which I'm going to have to open it obviously. So let me see if I can show you that. Now it's interesting in the shop because I know I like this is one of my favourite trips tracks as well and pull ups of the bumper. And uh, in the shop I thought I wonder if this is a good album. I don't want to buy spend a fair amount of money on an album that I don't really like. So I was listening to it on a streaming service and I thought, why am I why am I con contemplating buying an album which I will rarely play because I don't play records that often. Um of something I can listen to on streaming for free as part of my existing subscription. But I like the I like the uh, style of the vinyl, so should we open this up now? I wonder if I can uh, open it up without destroying it. So I asked the guy in the shop, I said, um, what do people do nowadays, these collectors? What do they do? You know, is it heresy now to un unseal a you know a sealed record or a sealed vinyl as I had to call it uh, and he said no he said some people some people buy them to keep them some people buy them to play them and uh, he said be careful I don't scratch this he said some people buy two copies and they open one and then uh, keep the other sealed no, I'm not I'm not really a collector let me have a look at this off camera. Obviously, I don't want to scratch this record with a Stanley knife. That would be terrible. So, if you're a vinyl collector, look away. There we go. That'll do it. Let me adjust the camera again. So, on the back of this, I can't show you the code. It's right at the bottom. But there's a, a code that allows me to access all the tracks as uh, MP3s, which is handy. I'll probably do that. Um, but for one download in entirety. So yeah, I'll probably do that so I can listen to this. Well, it's on streaming. What's the point? I suppose I'll download and add it to my collection of MP3s. Right, this is heavy. Oh, is it one of these heavy vinyl things? Could be. I have no clue, really. Anyway, I wonder if you're on a high enough resolution or big enough TV, you'll be able to have a look at that. Um, if you pause the video. So that's it for today. Um, I'm going to have a look at doing the other video now where I'm going to review the soundberg using some of these. Um, I don't intend to buy lots of vinyl. I'm not a collector, but I have got some up in the loft which I've got to liberate and then uh, enjoy those uh, if they're not completely destroyed from spending 20 years up in the loft. As I may have already said, that's the end of this video. This is just giving you a chance to click pause and give me a thumbs up on this video if you liked it. Or you can click on the little green Android and subscribe to the channel. Click on the red P and go visit my Patreon page. Or you can click on the box and see a video that YouTube thinks you might like. Or click on the playlist and go to a playlist of videos similar to the one you've just watched. Thanks very much. I'm just not in the groove today.